Democrat Take Part World, which is made possible with the support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we're speaking with a policy analyst from the Center for Clean Energy Innovation, a think tank in D.C. that's working to power the developing world without the environmental damage. Please welcome Megan Nicholson to the show. Yay, Megan. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good to have you here. How'd you get involved with CCEI, and what exactly does CCEI, CCEI do? So the Center for Clean Energy Innovation uh, is actually an affiliated research center of the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation, which is a Washington, D.C.-based think tank. Just rolls off the tongue. Ooh, yeah. Lots of words there. <laughs> um, so the center was founded in order to advance solutions to both climate change and energy access through innovation policy. And we see at the center that technology is really the solution to both of these challenges. How'd they find you? Uh, I was actually working at the World Bank at the Global Environment Facility um, as an intern, and my boss, Matthew Stepp, who's the best boss ever. Shout out to Matthew, me. shout out to Matthew. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, and I've been there for three years now. So how is your organization's strategy in tackling this issue different from other organizations? So the Center for Clean Energy Innovation prioritizes technology as mm -hmm. the solution, and I think that's very different from everyone else. Um, even looking at the uh, climate negotiations happening in Lima this week, um, the negotiations are mostly focused on how countries can decarbonize their economies, but not what they need to decarbonize their economies. They're focused on goals, but not technology. Do they actually call it decarbonize? Yeah. Because that sounds cool. Yeah. Like, well, just as a word. As I mean, most uh, climate negotiators would say that we need to deeply decarbonize yeah. the economy by 80% yeah. by 2050 in order to mitigate climate change. The, the U.S. has been criticized for, for not entering into you know, international agreements uh, to prevent climate change or to roll back climate change. What can the U.S. do today um, to, to, for, to move this issue forward? I think we have in the U.S. one of the best uh, innovation ecosystems in the world. And if we could use that innovation ecosystem in order to accelerate, you know, next generation solar, next generation wind, um, batteries, smart grid technologies, um, all of these things can really change the situation. We can really dramatically improve both uh, energy access in developing countries and we can mitigate climate change. When you think about what we've gotten in our planet, what we've gotten in climate change and realize that uh, only 24% of sub-Saharan Africa has reliable access to electricity, so we haven't even press the gas fully down as a global yeah. society, these countries are coming online. And as, to me, at least, it seems an issue of fairness, right? We've had in the West 100 years of free-flowing electricity in general, yeah. and now other nations want that, but there is this cost. Does that enter into the situation when you're visiting and working with these nations? Do they feel that there's some intrinsic right to power? And how does that balance against the issue of, whoa, we got to decarbonize? Yeah, I think there's definitely that argument in a lot with throughout DC and throughout the globe. Um, but I think the the real thing that you got to is fairness. It's we took this pathway, and we should let other nations take the same pathway. And I read a study recently um, by the International Energy Agency that says that even if all of sub-Saharan sub Africa was to get energy access, that would only increase the share of global carbon emissions in that region by 3%. So we're really talking about negligible contributions to climate change mm. at that point. Well, Megan, please save us all because we need you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Guys, you. you can get involved by heading over to takepart.com slash world to sign our petition to demand U.S. action on climate change. And while you're there, read up on how one nonprofit curbs climate change by recycling plastic bottles in an unexpected way.